Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm tired. <laughs> and I'm Ruby. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to keep that one in. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even have a Ruby cosplay. Th this is Ember. <laughs> And this is our thoughts on Ruby, Volume 6, Episodes 5 and 6. And apparently I am tired because I don't even know my own name anymore. <laughs> yeah. And two very good episodes. Got some lore, got some interesting stuff, found a new type of grim, which apparently are energy-sucking fiends. Because they do get rid of Will, but they, like, drain energy overall because everyone kept saying, in both episodes, I'm tired. And that was even the final entry in the journal. It said, I'm tired. And it's kind of interesting how, like, it almost felt like the Grimm were, like, guiding them to drop it down the well. The relic. Well, supposedly Grimm are attracted to the relic, so... At first, I couldn't tell if it was one creature all kind of smushed together or multiple creatures. Yeah, I wasn't sure uh, when we got the first shot once we were down the well. Lots of nice use of dark. I kept wanting to, like, reach over to the remote and adjust the brightness on the TV. <laughs> but we should go back to the first episode. Some interesting tidbits in there. The return of Neo. <laughs> hmm? Neopolitan. It's kind of interesting how she like shattered into glass a couple of times. It's like a disguise ability, apparently. Yeah, yeah. N nice trick. So they've both gotten stronger. And apparently Neo can't actually listen to reason. <laughs> I also like the, let's talk. And then, oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll never underestimate the importance of body language. Because Neo communicated everything quite well. <laughs> Apparently, she probably still does, but she blames Cinder for Torchwick's death. Which I'm not quite sure of yet. I'm still not 100% willing to say that Torchwick is dead. It's mainly because he was like swallowed in one solid chunk. Yeah. That, that's the key thing. And this also brings up something I, I heard from somewhere else. No body means no death. Because there's no body saying that he's dead. There's still a possibility that he's out there somewhere. Especially that whole being eaten whole thing. And considering how thoroughly Grim dissolve when they're killed. If someone happened to turn around and kill that Grim during the battle. Or if Tortric himself. From the inside. Also, Penny was a robot. Or android, I think is the more appropriate term. So, she could technically be backed up somewhere. I believe we had that conversation previously. Yep, I'm just saying, like, two characters that... With that case, we do have a body on Penny, but here's the thing about Penny. She's an android. That means, technically, her soul or essence could be portable. At the very least, her design schematics are backed up somewhere because what scientist gets rid of their blueprints and also in that day and age who wouldn't have a backup of at least her base programming even if it's not all of her experiences later the base program that started out as penny should still be in existence it's gonna be interesting because i have a feeling that no matter what version of Penny we would eventually get, it's either going to be the Penny that, Hello, I'm Penny! Or even the one where, Oh, hi, Ruby! Because the backup ends, like, probably just before the events that happened. Depending on how the backup happened, if it's, like, ongoing cloud backup, then she has everything right up to right before her circuits went offline. But as Penny wasn't in any of these episodes... Well, it, it's just like Torchwick and Penny were the two big deaths that really started off this st section of the thing. And Torchwick was brought up, so I thought I'd... If you're counting deaths, Pura, but 
Pyrrha is gone, gone. Yeah, that, that's definitely, we saw the body, we saw the body of Dolph. End of story. Yeah, but speaking of Pyrrha, that leads into, oh, confirmation, Silver Eyes. Yes, called it. I, I like how she even phrased it. Isn't it obvious? Yeah, yeah, because <laughs> it was. And we actually had to rewind the end of the second episode there just to make sure that she said had. Because you know, they could have just been lenses over her eyes, not her eyes. But apparently they are a complete replacement. Also, I like the interactions we're getting with the pairs, the standard pairs, Ruby and Wise and Blank and Yang, because we get those interactions and I'll protect you. Hmm? Yeah, <laughs> everything was going just fine up until Blake said, I'll protect you. Like, no. We'll handle him together. Much better phrasing. Because, I'm sorry, Yang is not going to be the girl in any relationship. Yeah, no. Also, I, I think that's Yang really shouldn't take that too hard. Because Blake's also going through this thing of she doesn't feel like she can actually protect people. So that's just her trying to resolve that. Also, we saw it coming in the intro and... Poor, poor crow. Oh, yeah. Hmm, I wonder if his luck gets worse the more drunk he gets. I would think it would free up his semblance more because he doesn't have any active control over his semblance. So you add on impaired abilities and yeah, it probably gets worse. Except it was pointed out when he first arrived around the time of the Vital Festival. He's always drunk! Apparently there's drunk, and then there's drunk. No, there's drunk, then sloshed. He, he was sloshed. At least by the end of the second episode. Maybe even the beginning of the second episode as well, because... Oh boy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sunrise. Yeah. <laughs> and interesting, those apathy grim reminded me a little bit of Legend of Zelda Redeads because of the scream and then how... The reaction of the team. Exto is less of completely freezing them and more of just like sucking the energy out of them so they couldn't really do anything. Because Redead's screen would just freeze you in place and then they would hop on your back and proceed to gnaw on your head until you're like, ah, get off me, get off me, get off me. Of course, you could also, there's certain masks you could wear and stuff like that in Zelda, but that's a different story. Those grim. I was also thinking of. Harry Potter, and Dementors, because they also kind of suck happiness and positive emotions. But these guys kind of like took all emotion, though anger did kind of boil over in this episode between everyone. Just a bit. And is it just me reading into things too much, or, or was Ruby and the old lady both less affected by the Grimm? I think they were less affected, because... Ruby was fighting more than the others. You know, she kept saying, we have to keep going. We have to do this. How can you say, leave it behind, give up? So Silver Eyes may have offered some protection. Or in Ruby's case, it could just be her Mary Sue status. That doesn't explain it for Miss Calaveras. And the classic left behind diaries as... A storytelling and making a nice creepy atmosphere. Reading diaries is always a trope in horror films to really convey like, oh, something really creepy happened in the past. Let's read through, oh. I always find it funny in some of those where they bas it basically writes up to the last moment. A lot of those, and you're like, how did they write that last moment bit? Especially since sometimes it's like, and then they killed me. How did you manage to write that last line? Are you a zombie now? And you finished the diary as a zombie? Because there's a lot of that's like, writes up to the very last moment, and that's when the person dies. In this case, it's just before he goes to bed, so it kind of makes sense with the way that played out, but still, it's like... Well, that's the thing. It gets to the point where nobody wants to bother to get up. They're that apathetic. So that's why everyone was dead in their beds, because eventually they were too tired to get back up. Mm. When I first kept hearing them say tired in the first episode, I was like, is it going to be bad for them to go asleep? 
I'm like, nobody should go to sleep because they're going to have trouble waking up. People were dead in their beds. You should not go to sleep. Or not everyone. Like, have two or three people up. Do watches. And rotate. Especially with Crow. Ruby should have known what the way Crow is. She said, okay, everyone wants us to go to sleep. Crow says he's going to wake us up in the morning, but he is drunk. So one of us stays up for a little bit, then rotates out with someone else. I also like the old Lee. Yeah, I'm too old to be told but to go to sleep by a young man. Yeah. Like, no young man's going to tell me what to do. Sits down in the chair, turns on the lamp. I also like how um, Crow was like automatically assuming that just because Oscar was a farm boy that he knew how to repair a tire. Yes, he may be a farm boy, but who says he actually fixed stuff like that? Different farm hands have different jobs. Also, who says the farm he worked on even had that type of equipment? And I'm glad that they included at the end of that episode the um, concept art because I couldn't really see anything in the shed they were walking in. Like when they looked at the thing, like, like that's not street legal. I'm like, is this no farm equipment? Because it's kind of dark. And then they showed the concept art for it. Oh, like, oh, it was a tractor. Like, I had a feeling it was a tractor, but I couldn't tell. You need to work on your eyes more. Yeah, I do have trouble drawing those sometimes. Also, I like the nice, well, one, I like the effect of Wise's candle lighting. A little bit of magic. I love how that gave us the lead in of her end attack. I also like how they also gave us more foreshadowing with, I believe Ruby says, set things on fire. Yeah, so, well, we won't have any trouble starting a fire. I love, like, how Wise was like, one more thing. Yeah. Starts. So, no, we're not leaving yet. And then she starts hucking bottles, and Crow is like, why are you tossing? It's kind of like, Jack Sparrow, why are you, the rum? <laughs> uh, I'm like, I know what she's doing. Especially she's like, after a couple of like, oh, oh, oh. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I got it at the first one. <laughs> and yes, for sure, some of you out there got it as soon as they walked back into that part of the house. Well, I kind of knew that they were headed to that locked door. I knew it was going to lead back to the house because I'm like, for them to have been affected that badly, it has to be all underneath, not just in the well. Because otherwise the whole town couldn't be as badly affected. Not that the whole town wouldn't have eventually gone under, but it wouldn't have been everyone dead in their beds. And I really like the atmosphere they gave to the farm. When I was like listening to some stuff, I heard that apparently the name of the farm is related to Sleepy Hollow in some way and the tale of the Headless Horseman. So the moment I heard like, like, yeah, other than them getting there and it's empty, this is not a good place. It's definitely not going to be a good place. And personally, my really only exposure to the Headless Horseman tales is Disney's animated Ichabod Crane. So really light on lore there. And my knowledge of it comes from basically the Disney one as well. Also, the live action one with Johnny Depp, which was kind of nice. I, I enjoyed that one. The usual kind of dark thing with Johnny Depp. And I believe it was also a Tim Burton thing as well. So, and like, like we said, like confirmed for the Silver Eyes thing and just that whole scene at the end. I really hope she's the person that fills us in on more of the backstory of Silver Eyed people because she seems to know a lot. And I think she's going to have a lot more knowledge than what Crow told us after Ruby regained consciousness after the whole thing with Pyrrha and Cinder. And the things that she told Ruby to focus on were kind of interesting. Like, yes, think about your friends and family, but also life must be saved or something like that. Like, don't think about the Grim. Think about your friends, your family, think about life. It's precious and must be protected. So it's not just a feeling of love. It's a feeling that I must protect this. I will be sword and shield. None shall pass. And we now know who was also looking for Cinder, which was Neapolitan. But I like the line of, yeah, put the good glasses away. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, she knew what was going to happen. Then she was like, yeah, that's enough in here. Would you ladies take it outside? Okay. And we thought they would like walk out. No. Through the window. <laughs> and if I was her like, yeah, we need to stop doing that. We need to escort them out first because they keep breaking our windows. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
I, I would love a cut back to the informant later. Either just a summary of what happened afterwards or to see them more in use. Because it's an entire organization. We got to see more of these guys. Now the question is, who's going to utilize them next? Who are they going to be asked to find? Who's going to pay them? Mm. How far spread are the spiders? Are they going to run into Adam and the White Fang? Or just Adam? Because he may not be part of the White Fang anymore? I think pretty much most of the White Fang is dead at this point because he kind of killed all of them. I don't think he killed all of them. I think he killed the people who happened to be in the building or throne room at the time. But pretty much Adam's on the outs with all the Faunas, so yeah. Though now that we're back on to Faunas, when Team Ruby was down the well and they said turn out the lights, yeah, not a problem for Blake. Most Faunas have excellent night vision. That's a good point. I completely forgot about that. But also she was a good point. It's like, it would probably be easier just to look for the glow. Yeah, definitely. Though it doesn't seem like it glows that much when Ruby has it on her belt. It looks like it's a, kind of a faint glow. But compared to Pitch Black, also just to go into shipping territory momentarily, I find it interesting that the name of the ship for Blake and Yang is the same as the name of Blake's bike. That's a that's a good point. I didn't even like pick up on that because I just thought, oh oh that's the name of her bike. Cool. <laughs> yeah, but it's the name of the ship. And if you listen to the song Bumblebee on the soundtrack, I don't think they're talking about the bike. <laughs> uh, speaking of the soundtrack, did you get any more out of the lyrics? Because like one of the first things you said as we started up the episode was like, okay, lyrics stay in my head this time. <laughs> I got like a couple more words. It's still sounding like it's a draw. Some wins, some loses. And thanks to spoilers in my feed, I wish there was a filter for that. I think I know who is in fighting in the shadows in the intro, but I, I'm not gonna say, cause I don't wanna spoil anything for you. But by saying it here, I at least have it documented so I can go back and say, yeah, I was totally spoiled on this because of this one image. I get that feeling. Because there's been like several stuff that scrolls by in my news feed on Google. It's like, I, I, I need to like, because they have this option to show me less or more of this. Sh show less or more of this. I just wish they had like, no, this is a spoiler. Keep this away from me for this period of time. Then you can show me stuff like this. Because all sorts of websites have, you know, where you can put on a spoiler filter. I do want to know about this, but you're giving it to me in such a way that you're kind of giving me hints. And poor Ember over there is like, oh no, I see those two pixels in the corner. I know exactly what's going to happen. Really? Out of two pi- Oh my god, she was right. I mean, it took like two seconds when we were watching an episode of Denver the Last Dinosaur for her to summarize the entire plot. It was crazy. I'm like... We're surfing through channels. We end up in an episode of Denver the Last Dinosaur. She goes, okay, yeah, this is what's going on. I'm like, how can you tell that from the scene we were watching? Then just watching the episode. Oh my god, you are right! <laughs> yes, yes. So I'm only maybe a little bit exaggerating by me saying that, yeah, those two pixels. <laughs> but back to the episodes. The first of these two episodes was mostly focused on getting things set up for the next episode. You know, the whole haunted village thing, which was really cool. Have I mentioned how much I liked the atmosphere in this episode? It was creepy without getting too creepy because I don't really do the horror genre. I just wish we could have watched this like in October because it really worked well with that. Not that Grimm aren't creepy all the time, but the layout, I mean, it's a common horror video game theme. You come across a house or a village, it's empty. You're trying to figure out what happened to the inhabitants. You find some creepy stuff. You find a journal, a diary, a phone message. And suddenly whatever happened to them starts happening to you. Or you already start to notice something strange. We don't really be like, oh, it's mild strange stuff. And then you find the diary or something and go, ah, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to... I'm going to leave. You you horror people just stay there. 
stay there. I'm going to go now. <laughs> like, don't follow me. Nope. <laughs> or in my cases, when I play those type of video games, I start sneaking around going, nothing's going to get me. Nothing's going to get me. Oh, God, it got me. <laughs> and that's an interesting thing that gets brought up with wise. The whole, like, why are we still fighting? Because the thing is, I don't think they did they just said these things because the Grimm told them to say things. I think these were things that were already in them, but the Grimm removed some of the inhibitions from saying them out loud. So everyone was thinking these things and having these issues, but because they were tired, it's very easy to let things slip when you're tired. I called myself Ruby. I at the beginning of this, I think I was mixing up our lines of I'm Ember and this is our thoughts mm -hmm. on. It was hilarious and I'm glad Lux is leaving it in. But a lot of people, you'll hear them, you know, after a fight go, I'm sorry, I'm just tired. So these were definitely things they were thinking about. And what was also really interesting is Ruby couldn't really come up with an answer for them. And I think it's because she's still dealing with stuff and she hasn't found the answer herself. She just knows that she's not willing to give up. That's not her personality. She doesn't do give up. Unlike poor Crow. Yeah. And bad phrasing on that lady. Well, she doesn't know. She doesn't know anybody's semblances. She doesn't know these people. They just happen to be on a train together and then they got stuck together. Though I think she wanted to be with them. Because I think during that particular scene, everyone was going one direction and she noticed where they were going and headed to follow them. Yeah, I think she was interested in being around them. But I don't think she necessarily was planning on the whole being stuck in the middle of the wilderness. And I don't think she can see colors really well. No, because she had to ask Ruby what color her eyes are. And we actually got to see through her lenses. Everything has a very blue tint to it and certain things were highlighted. Like she could actually see in the dark better than the others could. Because the technology wasn't doesn't appear to be relying on light to function. It's probably using a combination of infrared and a couple other things. And probably some type of dust magic. Because everything goes back to dust. And I really hope we get some more information on the whole Silver Eyes thing. Just talking about her again maybe like, yeah, I really want to know because she, she, she was a Silver Eyes, Silver Eyed Maiden. So she's going to have hopefully more information or at least more ways that Ruby can start harnessing this power instead of just being the magical MacGuffin that goes off when bad things happen. Just to actually get it a little more under conscious control. Kind of like the whole Avatar state, because for the first couple seasons, that just triggered at random. And then Aang learned how to invoke it at will. So far, this season is really solid. Because I wouldn't consider, even though it was a horror-themed episode, I wouldn't really consider it a filler episode. There were still parts of the main story going on there. Like, it showed emotions of the characters and stuff like that. And the building of the relationships and how they're dealing with the information they got from questioning Jen. And how they're trying to recover or failing to recover. And we get more world building because we're getting more on the dangers of these outside settlements. And the different tactics that people have tried because we've seen several different outside settlements and each one is fallen but in a slightly different way and this is a whole new level that oh yeah he's just gonna use a couple of these guys to take the edge off but no he trapped the entire pack underneath the town but he didn't realize that no he didn't realize it but that would also explain why Team Ruby was going downhill so fast. Those guys were probably starving. Hmm. Because they sap the strength away, and nobody's been there in a long time, and they've just been trapped down there. Hmm. 
Well, I don't think Grimm really starve, but I get your point. They don't really eat, and, you know, they're more just a destructive force. Though, based on the fact that one was looking out of the well at Ruby, apparently they could have left if they felt like it. Mm. Also, another thing that's really interesting that just popped back into my head is Yang and Blake. Both of them have seen an image of Adam. So that's interesting. Because my brain goes like, I don't think that's just them remembering something or getting PSD flashbacks. Something's going on. Something's definitely going on. With Yang, though, in this episode, I almost thought she was seeing the Grimm. And the overlay was Adam, because that's what her mind would see. But it's just interesting. Both of them have seen very clear images of Adam. And we also see that in the intro, because they're both looking out of the train car window, and we get an image of Adam in the window. And something else just hit me. Both of those times, they were near Grimm. Mm. So that's interesting. Okay, new theories are percolating. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you more when I have them solidified, but that's probably going to be in a different recording. Any other thoughts you'd like to go over on this episode? Well, uh, how about Osben's continuing absence? Yeah, and I think in a way, story-wise, this was kind of done to give Oscar more time for him to develop more as a character on his own for the audience. Well, I'm also thinking if Osben wasn't busy hiding, he might have recognized some of the trouble signs. Hmm. Also as a plot point, to not have someone who probably had experience with this type of Grimm because he's lived several dozen lifetimes. I just remembered another great line from the old lady. Close the door! It's already cold enough in there! Because <laughs> <sighs> they're also like, something's going to get us! Something's going to get us! And she's like, come on, guys. <laughs> it's amazing how many questions this ep these episodes actually brought up. A lot of questions. Because if you just look at it on the surface, you're like, okay, in the scheme of things, not a lot happened. Cinder and Neo have been reunited. And, oh, look, we ran into another abandoned town and fought some Grimm. That's what happened. So the thing is how it all happened. And just the strange stuff that happened around it and how it gave us insights into particular parts of their psyche and also what's going on in the world. And I really do like how they always include concept art in the outro credits. It's really great, and I also love that they put so much of it online. It really helps for drawing the fan art. Not that I draw, but hey, I can appreciate. That was one of the things Ohm really wanted with this series, is he made sure that the reference work that they used went online, <coughs> went online, so people could make good um, cosplay. I'll have to admit that all the Ruby cosplayers I've seen have looked awesome. It's also great for artists like me. Though I didn't do that with the Relic, which I should have, because I just took references from uh, screen caps of the show. I didn't even think of typing in Relic of this reference art. And then, funny, it was in the outro of these episodes. Yeah. Because I was watching that going, gosh darn it. And you're going, I'm not taking the time to redraw it. I'm not taking the time to redraw it. <laughs> it would have been easier to be able to sample the colors from that instead of going, okay, this is the cleanest pixel I have to sample a color from on this. <laughs> ah. So to wrap things up, more theories, more ideas, and excellent episodes. Very good episodes and so much set up because Neo and Cinder, the team, we're really starting to see Crow's downward spiral as pictured in the intro. I actually was afraid that um, he like died or something or was really close to dying because he was out cold and Ruby couldn't really stir him. No, no, just drunker than usual 
and alcohol can also be a depressant, so it could have made him more susceptible to the grim. Yeah, and his expression on the way out. Like, he didn't realize what was going on, then suddenly, then shoot! Like, ooh, bad day, bad day, bad day! <laughs> yeah. Or must go faster, must go faster! <laughs> and this has been our thoughts on Ruby, Volume 6, Episodes 5 and 6. Please watch your step when exiting. Welcome to the end of the episode. So, hope you enjoyed. Guessing maybe you did because you stayed around the whole time or you skipped fast forward to see the finished image of the art. Either way, you're here at the end, so thanks. If it's to lampoon our theories, please do so kindly and have lots of empirical evidence. If you're not already subscribed, please do so. YouTube, the whole bell thing, if you could do that. Uh, comments, we do enjoy comments. Uh, we try to answer or comment back on most of them. Some weeks are busier than others in, you know, RL. Once you're ready to uh, leave YouTube, there are links to Lux's art, Lux's Patreon, Lux's Coffee, my Tumblr, possibly some uh, affiliate program links for related merchandise or just things that we think you would like or possibly reference in an episode. So check out the links. And just to go over those in a little more detail, um, various social media sites and DeviantArt. And yes, we're still on Tumblr. While our content is adult, as in not intended for children, it is not adult, as in rated R or X. So, we still have a presence on their site. Patreon and Coffee, you're probably familiar with those, but not necessarily Lex's pricing structure. Starts at a dollar, which gets you a monthly poll and a sketch based on the results of that poll. More money, more rewards. That part's pretty much the same on every Patreon. Coffee, as you know, works in increments of three. And you get a thank you, which we thank you anyways just for being here. Got to go backwards a little bit because I did all Lux's stuff first because we have a separate YouTube series, which is more me-centric because I do the readings, Ember's Reading Room, children's books read out loud with commentary, Yes, because we need to keep it fair use, and also we hope it's entertaining. I have a little space on Tumblr where I go over some of my tips and tricks because I, I like to hack the system in terms of money and recipes and... Hey, there's tricks and bargains and recipes. Oh my. Thank you so much for watching and listening. We appreciate all of the support that we receive in the form of views, likes, comments, dialogues, suggestions, and of course financially as well. But all of it is truly appreciated. Thank you to all of our supporters, subscribers, etc. in whatever form you choose to grace us with your presence. Thanks again for listening. First couple seasons, that just triggered at random. And then Yang learned how to invoke it at will. And then Aang learned how to invoke it at will. Mm-hmm. Buddy slip up there. <laughs> it's one letter off. <laughs>